Lake Victoria was once known as the Jewel of Africa, so named for its pristine, clear waters. At the turn of the 19th century, Europeans and their technologies quickly changed the primal ecosystems. The harvesting of lakeside trees led to silt runoff into the Great Lake, creating clarity complications. which is near Kampala, right? Yeah. How far yeah. from Kampala? Just like five miles. About five miles on Lake Victoria. Yeah. We are completing our fishing expedition with Brian and with Ali. Brian is the film producer. <laughs> <laughs> and the editor. <laughs> <laughs> this, ah, this is one type of tilapia. Uh, with a black eye. This is the tilapia rendali, the red-bellied tilapia. Yeah. And this is niloticus. The sweetest one. The sweetest one. And that is the end of our film. <laughs> Introduced species as the Malaysian trumpet snail, Nile perch, tilapia, and water hyacinth, coupled with raw sewage, brought a host of problems from disease to hypoxia, while the native haplochromine population suffered. Lake Victoria has a network of many small satellite lakes. Some of these systems contain fish also found in Lake Victoria, while others have evolved their own haplochromine species flocks. Cichlids here originated from a handful of riverine species. They quickly diversified, evolving into over 500 distinct species in a geographical eye blink. These fish have adapted to take advantage of every niche they discovered. The haplochromine species in these waters, regardless of native population, are on the CARES priority list simply due to the fragility of their environment. Several organizations including zoos, 
public aquariums, and select universities in North America and Europe have or had programs in place to save some of these species threatened in their native waters. CARES has enabled the hobbyist to take a proactive role in species conservation, despite a disastrous outlook of fish species worldwide. With resources already in place and belonging to the hobbyist, the potential for us to positively affect the future of aquatic species, including those left in Lake Victoria, is immense. We are the last and best chance these fish have. The incredible adaptability of haplochromine cichlids is not restricted to a natural environment. These fish readily take to a captive setting. This, coupled with the skill of the cichlid aquarist, allows for a high chance of long-term survival once seed colonies have entered the hobby. The first priority of captive colonies is survival of those actual individuals. The hobbyist must have access to the experience and knowledge of others to offer an environment for success. The second priority must be to spawn the fish. The third priority is to spread the offspring to other like-minded individuals so as to not have all the captive representatives of a species in one location. There are instances where these fish might be severely threatened or already extinct in the wild. The hobbyist might be the very lifeline of these species and CARES facilitates the needed support to ensure success. The diversity of Lake Victoria's haplochromine species flock is immense. One should know some basic information, including temperament, food preference, size, and if available, native habitat. Many species do well in a planted aquarium, while others prefer a rocky habitat. Experienced aquarists often maintain Lake Victoria cichlids with each other or even another haplochromine cichlid from other African lakes with like water parameters. If one chooses to mix haplochromine cichlids, keep careful observations concerning aggression issues. It is absolutely essential to provide multiple males and females of each species to prevent hybridization. Many aquarists prefer to maintain a species-only configuration, ensuring that hybridization will not occur. Some aquarists prefer to construct a natural-appearing decor, while others have success with a more simplistic aquarium without substrate and utilizing pieces of PVC pipe for the fish. No matter the setup, most haplochromine cichlids will adapt to what surroundings they are provided with. Many algae grazing cichlids are found at rocky oak croppings near the surface where the sun's rays can initiate ample growth of algae. These fish have extended intestinal tracts that enable them to digest the low protein plant matter. Many species are on the aggressive side of the furu spectrum. With ample rockwork, the algae grazing cichlids spawn readily. It is important to break the line of sight of rivaling conspecifics.
This group consists of small, brightly colored haplochromines with a mildly aggressive demeanor. They are primarily a snail-eating cichlid, although there is at least one species that's a crab-eater. A strong outer and inner pharyngeal jaw set enables snail-eaters to breach the shells of mollusks. Snail-eaters, possibly due to the preference of feeding in the strata of open water, were easy prey and decimated by the Nile perch. Several species have not been seen in the wild for decades. Algae sifters tend to pull the strands of algae eating the diatoms and small creatures living there. Some have specialized teeth that resemble tines on a fork to accomplish this task. And many of these fish are very well known and popular to the cichlid hobbyist. Potophages are a group of cichlids that feed upon the eggs or larvae of other mouth-brooding cichlids. There are two methods these fish use to engage in this behavior, the bumpers and the engulfers. The bumpers will ram the buccal cavity of a holding female cichlid causing her to expel some or all of her brood. The engulfers will en envelop the mouth of a holding female cichlid and literally suck the fry out. Many pedophages have disappeared from Lake Victoria and are high priority cares fishes. Many of the zooplankton feeders school in open water, feeding on tiny crustaceans. 
the small arrow-headed species did not fare well with the boom of the Nile perch. Some of the rock-dwelling furu have also adapted to zooplankton as a portion of their diet, but these fish tend to be more opportunistic than the open water fishes. The sardine type cichlids did not cope well with the modern changes in Lake Victoria. The insect-eating cichlids of Lake Victoria are some of the most colorful fish on the planet. For the most part, these are opportunistic feeders with a reverence for small insects, worms, and larvae. It's not at all uncommon for multiple representatives from this assemblage to be found together. Many of these insect-eating cichlids can be found among the rocky reefs and outcroppings in the region. Fish-eating species were once abundant in the cichlid-rich expanses of Lake Victoria. It's believed the Nile perch has preyed upon many of these species to the point of extinction. Piscivores currently maintained in the CARES Preservation Program are given a high concern as a group of fish. 
In several cases, the aquarist is responsible for the survival of these species as they may no longer exist in their native waters. Detritus sifting species have elongated digestive tracts which enable them to extract almost all nutrients out of morsels that most other fish would pass up. Most of these species are quite colorful and tend to venture onto sandy areas where most of the rock cichlids would not go. Once a vast assemblage, many of these species are no longer found in Lake Victoria. It is imperative that the CARES members maintaining these fish realize the responsibility of protecting their well-being. Once a female is ripe with eggs, the male will often excavate a small pit at the base of an object. It is here that he will attempt to lure the female to spawn. Males will often spar with one another as a dominance display, with the victor securing breeding rights. One of the primary goals of maintaining Keras fish is to ensure species survival through captive breeding. Fortunately, many Lake Victoria cichlids are readily spawned with minimal effort. Appropriate, good quality foods, coupled with high water quality, is often all that is required to trigger spawning. It's always helpful to have multiple females, as these fish are not pair-forming cichlids. Often, the only interaction these fish will have is the act of spawning. The dominant male will enact a series of shimmies in front of the female. This activity is commonly referred to as flashing. While flashing, the male will try to lure the female to his prepared spawning location. Here, the flashing intensifies. The pair will circle each other. Eventually, the female will drop several eggs and quickly turn to pick them up in her mouth. The male then extends his anal fin vertically over the substrate. Egg spots on this fin, called ocelli, are of similar size and color as the female's eggs. When she nips this fin, the male releases milk, internally fertilizing the female's clutch. The female carries the eggs in her mouth for up to three weeks in a pouch called the buccal cavity. After the larvae have absorbed their yolk sacs, the fry are released. However, the female will take them back into her mouth if she senses danger. Eventually, the fry are too big to all fit back into the mother's mouth. 
At this time, the female leaves her young to fend for themselves. The ever-evolving haplochromine cichlid is always looking for an advantage to ensure their fry are given the best chance of survival. A seemingly recent evolutionary development is this rare case of a male taking over the brood care traditionally associated with female behavior. The Worldwide Cares Network of Hobbyists gives many of these species a real chance of long-term survival. One of the first large CARES projects was converting a storage building at the Kenyan Marine and Fisheries Institute in Kisumu into an aquarium showcasing the haplochromines from the region. various CARES for Education programs has successfully mentored students to become expert aquarists reproducing Lake Victoria cichlids while passing the fry produced by their efforts onto facilities worldwide. CARES has been involved in successful reintroductions while researching species and habitat that might be suitable as future reintroduction locations. Visit the CARES website where one might find resources related to the program as well as articles compiled by CARES members. CARES draws on the expertise of like-minded hobbyists and ichthyologists to produce the CARES priority list, showing a catalog of species currently recognized by CARES as an animal requiring our help. Water is such a precious substance. It is life. With each passing year, we humans destroy ecosystems of all manners, continually polluting the very substance essential to our survival. The one thing we can be sure of is the role of the aquarist in species survival is only going to increase.